So you guys, while I got my skid out of the sled, I thought I'd go through it a little bit, maybe show you a couple little tricks and some neat stuff that kind of guys do. Uh, I greased it, of course, checked the sliders, uh, checked out my skidoo scratchers that I installed on in a separate video. You can see how good they've did. That's a whole year on them. I don't know, I had some, uh, some comments that they're no good, but they worked fine for me all last year. So what the heck? In this part of the video, Ricky gets poop in his pants because he has to talk about wheelies. Enjoy. Some people always ask, how do you wheelie a sled? <laughs> I'm not a big wheelie guy. I like to go up the hill nice and flat and straight and none of this jumping around and doing your whippy flies and butterfly thingies and your up entries or whatever you guys call it. So I have sucked up the limiter strap one notch on this skid already once. What that does, it keeps this part of the skid sucked up. So it keeps the front of your snowmobile down. But if you want a wheelie, and if you learn anything through this video, subscribe, because there's more of this coming. I know there's some of you kids out there that just love the wheelie thing. Take your limiter strap, loosen it right off. Stiffen up the front shock as stiff as you can get it. Loosen off the back end as soft as you can get it. Uh, which some sleds have torsion springs. These newer models all just have one shock, either an air shock or an air with a coil. Um, loosen it off as loose as you can get it. Uh, it's gonna be harder to do it on a longer sled, of course. The 146, you should be able to wheelie that thing right over backwards. When you see all these guys doing the whoopy dippies over backwards, it's usually a 46 or a 54. It's hard to do it on a longer sled, but guys do it. So if you want a really wheelie, that's kind of what you do, gotta do. If you watch the water cross guys go across the water, that's exactly what they do. They have short tracks. They take the limiter right off. Actually, I think they even put a bar in there to keep it out because they want the front of the sled to rise up in the air so they can turn because you can't steer the skis on water. You can only steer the track, right? So other than that, everything looks good on this skid. It's got uh, just about 4,000 miles on it. So it looks, it looks relatively good shape. I'm not gonna change the sliders, even though I got it out. I'm waiting for some, uh, some good sliders, the Teflon ones, whenever they come out again. So in this skid, guys, we have just the Q3 Fox float shocks. They're light. I don't think they work as good as a coilover shock. That is a shock with a spring on it. Um, I don't really feel like changing them. It's, it's quite expensive. Right now, I actually met a guy on the mountain here a couple years ago who figured he had it dialed in. So what we're doing is we run 70 pounds in the front shock and 170 in this rear shock. We leave the, the adjusters on number one for the softest. And then in the front skid, we run 70 pounds on the front shocks. You should get a pump from your dealer or with the sled. So if you want to make adjustments out in the field, which is probably the best spot to do it. Just remember you take the weight off the snowmobile and then you get this fancy little pump. That's like a bike pump. And you just screw her into the air chuck on the end. And then you got a nice little readout here. So right now we got 160. 165, so I want that to go up to 170. So if I want a little more pressure, I just give her a little pump. Pump, 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 pump it up. Doesn't take much, a few strokes of that and you're good to go. Take it off. It's a little harder to do, of course, when it's on the snowmobile, guys, but practice it in your shop. I'm always telling you, do all this stuff in your shop, get used to it, then you can do it out in the field real easy. On these skids, there's not much to do. You've got three grease nipples, four actually on this one. One, two, three, four, basically on all your movable shafts, right? They gotta have something in there. Check your wheels, make sure they're not sh shaking or, or uh, or grinding or anything, make sure the bearings are nice and smooth. This one's all good still. 
So we're just going to take it and put it back in the sled. And that's kind of a quick run through of the suspension. There's a ton more to it. It'd be like probably four or five videos of just explaining hows and what's to do and suspension setups. I know there's guys talking they would like a suspension setup video. Uh, it's tough. It depends on how you ride, where you ride, how big you are, all kinds of variables. But we're going to shoot a couple this winter and try and get them out to you.